Hey guys, what's going on today? Random Andrew here. Got some work to do on the Mini. So this will be a Mini video. I'll say that before we go any further. But before we do any, any of that, before I show you a nice little pile of goodies we got sitting there for the Mini, I wanted to take a minute and say please subscribe to the channel. We're at 780 now. That means another 220 subscribers. And we'll finally, after since 2012, I think, if you go back to when I started this channel, it's a long time to wait to hit a thousand subs. So please, you're doing me a world of favors by subscribing. And also do check out the playlists. Make sure you got the notification bell. Uh, that notification bell lets you know when I post something new. And the playlists will help you find what you're looking for because this is a random channel, right? So there's a lot of different things. Some of you are here for car stuff. Some of you are here for the camping stuff. Uh, some of you are here just because you like watching my stuff. Hopefully they're not here for me. So yeah, okay. How to keep busy during the COVID era. Maybe that's what we should call this video. Work on your car. Get lots of stuff done. You got all the time in the world right now to make sure every little thing is good on your vehicle, which is kind of what I've been doing. You guys know I've been having a coolant issue. There's no flow whatsoever. So we're gonna be doing a water pump. We're gonna be doing a bunch of stuff. But for a $500 car. Right? Does that even look like a $500 car to you guys? All right, let's, let's see what's in these boxes. I'm gonna give you a hint right now, and it is not a real hint. Could that be a T64? No, it's just a coincidental sticker. Oh dang, I gotta change the battery, and then we'll rip into these. Okay, battery changed. Let's get you guys on here. So I don't know if it's showing up or not but it is trying to snow out here a little bit. I might not be getting to the big box today or even to what's inside of here going on the car, but we're gonna get a start on a few things, see how the weather plays out, and then we might actually do it all today, some today, tomorrow. You guys won't know because it'll all be together, edited together in one video. Okay, the first box, so deceptively marked as T64. I hate to bust your dreams, but it's not a T64 of anything. Lots of paper packaging to reassure things are good. No, it's not a turbo. <laughs> we wish. No, it's a water pump. Brand new, brand spanking new, clean. Everything's good on it. Free turning, free spinning, whatever you want to call it. So what I'll have to do, there's also a gasket in here I'll show you in a minute, but I'm gonna have to take the housing off my existing water pump that's on the car, put the end housing on it, and that lets you hook up your coolant lines. Very cool, great deal on this. As well as a brand new gasket for between the housing and new water pump. So that's good, very important piece. And you know, you're traditionally used to your V8 style front of the block water pump. That is a fair bit different looking. Right, this is for the Cooper. It goes bolts on like an alternator, an air compressor. And uh, it's different, but it, it works. Okay, secondly, this box is a pretty light little box. This is a common part that needs to be replaced on these Mini Coopers to do with the cooling system. It is part of the Radfan module. It's a resistor unit. Brand new guy right here. Have a good look at that. It's a Euro Parts brand. And I'm going to end up having to solder it in. But that's no problem. I can do that. That's It's simple. Right on. As well... A Luftfilter, air filter. It's apparently a German part. Brand new, paper material, air filter. It almost looks like the uh, stock K&N, so not the cone, but the one that's meant to replace your stock air filter. It'll work. It really needs it. You should see the filter that's in. Well, you will see the filter that's in the car when I take it out. It's needed. That's all for that lovely little box. And if you guys haven't noticed yet, that's Rock Auto. These parts, pretty good deal on the pricing for a lot of these parts say, compared to Canadian Tire or other uh, Napa, uh, CarQuest. Not, I'm not putting those guys down. I'm sure they've got good deals on parts too, but Rock Auto. And you get a free magnet. I got the pink Cadillac magnet this time. So, what's in the big box? Marked Fragile. Well, 
Should I even just pull this out or should I just tell you? Yeah, you guys like to see new parts. There you go, a brand new radiator. I'm gonna give you a close up shot of a couple spots in a minute. Uh, I'm sure it's not Rock Auto's fault. I'm trying to center it in the front of the cam the best I can. But you can see a little ding spot there, and a little ding spot there. Now that's not enough to really harm the rad at all, but for something that you pay as much for when you do for a rad, you'd expect it to be absolutely flawless. It's another little spot here, there's another little spot up here. But I mean, for the deal that you get, the price you pay through it, you can't complain. All right, so what I'm gonna get after now, pop the hood, I'm gonna start taking some things apart that will allow easier access to removing the whole front bumper. I don't know if I'm gonna have the, the battery power to record it all, so what I might do is just show you guys once the work is done. Not all the work, but step by step, you know what I mean? I'm only working with the one camera right now, and you know, I wouldn't mind having something that I can set up another camera, get the time lapses. That'll come later down the road when I can afford a little bit more, anything made from the channel, sponsorships, uh, Patreon, all that kind of stuff. We'll be going into making better videos. So if I can upgrade this camera, get additional cameras that allow me to do my time lapses or like a proper GoPro. I'm sure you guys don't like that GoPro clone footage. I'm not a big fan of it either. Anyways, let's get to doing this. One of the first steps, disconnecting negative, then positive, and removing the battery. Then I'm gonna remove the ECU, pull the rest of the battery box out. Yeah, that's the brain. Uh, then the air breather. I'm gonna bring this hose and that up and give them a good cleaning too. Uh, and then from there, I start disconnecting anything I can get at that connects the front bumper. I might wait until I have a few more things undone. But I should re-watch the video, make sure I do it all right. I mean, anything undone can be done back up if it was an unnecessary undoing. And I wish I could just take it all off in one piece, but I know I'm gonna end up having to do it with the bumper and then support and then the crash tubes underneath and move everything else. You guys will see when I get to it. But I mean, it seriously is trying to snow out. So I don't know how much I'm gonna get done today. Well, now it's snowing out like crazy dumb. Why? Because I wanted to work on my car, that's probably why. You can tell everything's getting soaked. The tools are all soaked and... If I had to, I could do the work out here in this condition. I just really don't want to, being that I don't have to. So now that I've got everything all tore apart, I get to drop the battery box in, put the ECU back in, put the battery back in, just so I can lock everything up. Thanks, Mini Cooper. Anyway... I really wanted to get this done today, but we'll just, we'll catch up once the snow stops. Could be later today, might be tomorrow. We'll find out. Well guys, it's the next day. Sorry, it's a little bright, and then it goes dark, and then it's it bright. It's not me, it's the sun. So, when I started today, I had total intention of including you guys in a lot of the steps of what I'm doing today on the Cooper. Look at that, something's wrong with that front end of that car, isn't it? Um, and then it started snowing and I was like, you know what, screw it, I want to get this done. I got to know if this is going to fix my overheating issue or the lack of circulation. So I want to get all this work done. You remember I showed you all the parts yesterday, but I guess for you guys, that was just moments ago. So why don't I just shut up and show you guys what I've done so far. I know, it sounds so harsh, doesn't it? Boom. There you go. Yeah, uh, so far I removed the bumper, unhooked everything, found a few things, a few more things. I should run upstairs and actually get a pad and a piece of paper and start making notes of things like this. I guess I also could resort to refer to this video. This was my side marker light. Yeah, and then it was all held in and together. 
by this, the same stuff that you use to hold your windshield in. And it looks fairly fresh. Dang. Anyways, we're gonna fix that properly. Um, they didn't put a plug for the uh, fog lights. I'll go around and show you the fog lights in a minute. Oh, the battery's dying. Big surprise. Okay, so I might not be able to show you as much as I want to today. We'll work around it. Next, I gotta remove these crash tubes. I'm not even sure if I really need to, but unbolting the condenser fan, swinging it out of the way, drain the rad, uh, pull that right out because we got the new one going in, and then I can get around, like I get all this stuff out of here, and that'll allow us perfect access to everything we need to work on today. So, battery issues in mind, I'll catch you guys up in a minute. As well, these fog lights, they're also going to be coming off today. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's some moisture in there. And I had to clip the wire. See that? So I'm going to wire in a plug. So anytime I do have to go and put the car into what they call front-end service mode, then I can just unhook it normally. Apologies for the wind noise, guys, but a little bit later, the snow so far isn't being too bad of an issue and there's our problem so it'll be two bolts alternator bolts there these two guys here and do these hoses pull it off swap this housing over clean it up a bit and then swap it over I also got to remove this belt it's pretty good tension on it tensioners right up in here you just put a what they say just a small ratchet in there and Bring her back. I wonder if it might be easier from underneath now that everything's all open here. Like, look at it. Maybe a little bit of work. Get this off. And maybe a bit of work putting that back on. Because I literally had to feed this through an opening in it. Undo one of the coolant refill lines. But I mean, here's the front of the engine. Look at that weird intake manifold. Somebody has to come up with a good aftermarket one of these. And watch yourself, by the way, I noticed if you're looking for aftermarket throttle bodies online, be very careful, because the ones they advertise, I guarantee won't work with this. It's all electronic, right? And they all are cable actuated once they're advertising. But yeah, anyways, don't wanna get sidetracked here. I think uh, now I removed the belt. Let's get that water pump off. Just wanna add real quick, I ran into a little bit of problem when it comes to belt removal. Watch a couple videos, they say you need a specialist tool to do it, but guess what? I used this set of adjustables. I got on the tensioner with just enough pressure to lift it. Slip these off the power or the air conditioner compressor, the power steering pump, or sorry, water pump. And now we're good to remove it. Yay. Alright, so here we are on to the next negotiable day. It's a bit windy today, a little bit of a chill, but it's not bad, so you guys want to see where our, where we're at now got the water pump done we had a problem I had a problem the new pump it didn't come with a housing I'll just point it out here in a second well, I'll just show you now so this new pump right here this housing didn't come with it and then to get it off I had to seek out the help of the awesome Ken Forbes thank you buddy he managed to get all the old screws out. Hiked over to TSC. It's really hard to find screws during the COVID era. TSC's got you covered. New pump in, new house it in, gasket. Remember to put the grease, I got grease the gasket to make sure it lasts, it doesn't dry out. Got to slip a clamp or two over here. I'm not doing this yet because I still have to swap the rod. I'll show you that in a second. But yeah, you guys want to see? Here is my specialty tool for working with a Mini Cooper, oh, I can't do it and hold the camera, but good pair of adjustables, get them to the right size, you get it on there good and solid, no problem. So it's coming along, pretty much done with all down here, everything's hooked up, uh, working on, oh, this is, this is what holds your rad in in a Mini Cooper, by the way, guys. Ain't that nice? That's gonna be fun to get back on in the right condition. Anyhow. This rat is leaking down here somewhere. You could uh, it almost is a good rad, but it's not, right? So I've got the new rad. It'll go in, into the housing, but there's another piece. Give me a second, I'll show you guys. So this is your rad fan. 
when your fluid temperatures, your coolant temperature gets hot enough, you get a signal from the sensor and it'll tell it to turn on. And then there's a high and low mode for it and that's part where this, what I've been calling the fan module, it's really just a resistor of sorts. This one is cooked, like it's actually broken right here. So without having that to govern this, things weren't turning on. Well, fluid wasn't even circulating. Uh, the, the temperature sensor was just hanging in the bumper assembly. So there's gonna be some things to put back together that weren't originally put back together proper. Without it knowing, it can't pull air through and cool that coolant in the radiator. I'm gonna fix all this. I'm gonna have to resolder that in, put it in the box, put it all back together. Get out the trusty zip ties because I did break a tab here. No big deal. But this is what they're saying. There's a resistor you can solder. That is a common problem that goes. There's the old. That's the new. And there goes the box. But not much to go, really. Just got to solder that in. Put it all back together with the new rad. And then get that big freaking plastic mess back on the front of here. Somebody already long ago you can tell it's an old break right just look at it somebody broke it there and over there so I may uh, try and clean that up and then hit it with some glue I don't have any duct tape gorilla tape so we'll make do all right uh, I'll give you guys an update as soon as I have a little more progress to show but things are coming along nicely not as hard a car to work on I don't see why it's a thousand dollar job you want to pay me a thousand bucks to change your water pump I'll consider it and there you have it. Not my proudest taping, electrical, wiring, soldering. Jeez, I, I don't solder with a torch and I had to do this with a torch. And then I hate electrical tape. I usually use, uh, oh sorry, I dislike electrical tape. I usually use liquid e-tape. Don't have any. It's gotta be done. So I'm gonna put this all back together and then we can start putting the new rad in and putting this on. Well, let it be said, it is totally possible I did it. It's front end's mostly back together now, the harder part anyhow. And what really helped was this trans cooler right here. I discovered, actually through a video, and I should have paid more attention the first time, that these trans lines, automatic transmit, well, transmission lines in general, these two little tabs you squeeze and they'll come off. And that makes this, if you disconnect it down there, you see this guy and this guy? It makes it so much easier, when, especially when putting it back together. So now, uh, I guess, before I go any further, I don't want to get too much back together and start bolting everything down in the front. I'm going to start filling her full of coolant. We'll just see if there's any leaks. I'm pretty sure I could probably even run it at that point. Maybe throw a nut or two over to make sure that don't come off anyhow. But I mean, aside from that, there's one other thing I got to figure out too. And it's this guy right here. It's a temperature sensor of some kind. Is it incoming air temperature? I don't know, I'm gonna have to look that one up before I go sticking it anywhere specific, but I haven't found a mounting spot anywhere along here or on the back side of the rad, but it makes me think that if you look at the way that is, it should fit somewhere very specific. So I'll have to look that up. Aside from that, we've got some damage right here from previous owner. It's a bit cracked, but everything's supported, everything's held in, everything's good to go. And if you ever run into these troubles with these things, just remember this angle and then look at it on here. That better be in there all the way, man. I'll be real disappointed if my rad falls out going down the road. So, I guess I'll fill it and we'll test it out. Pretty sure I should be good to do that. Oh, and another thing, the rad fan module resistor thing. It's in, it's already replaced. Yeah, I did show you guys that. You remember my world-class tape job, my world-class soldering? That's it. Okay, let's test for leaks. Okay, so a bit of a mistake. I wasn't watching my bleeder valve. That's the highest point in the system. Coolant's come out, so I'm guessing it's filled the rad. And probably not the block. I can't see it having filled the block. So we'll start her up. That was from the bleeder spot. That's really gonna throw me off, isn't it? This little puddle right here from not paying attention right here. I got on the alternator too. So yeah, I guess um, tighten that up a bit. Then we'll start her up and try uh, cycling things through. Well, guys, folks, we're almost out of sunlight here. 
And everything, no leaks. Uh, I can, like I know nothing's blocked as far as the coolant side. Like I had this thing running. The temperature was to what we would say in the red. Somehow, some way, brand new thermostat, brand new water pump, brand new freaking rad. The hoses were still all good. There's no blockages. I even went as far as to try putting water down and through thermostat and it, there was water coming out like when it had all the water pump and the housing off down here it was coming out the end of the block there's not a blockage in the block the only thing I can think at this time is when I replaced my thermostat maybe I got a faulty thermostat I'm about to take it out I'm, I'm like this close to taking it out and have somebody drill some freaking holes for it so at least some coolant is flowing so I can know that coolant is flowing I'm stumped. I don't know what to do here, guys. So, ah, oh, dang. Like, I, I'm, I hate being stumped like this. You know, I did all the work. I got her all back together. I did the, the, and now, and now it's like, there's no flowing. I mean, like I said, I had it in the, re the red. Look, not hot. That is cold, except for right into here. And then I go down under here. So if you guys can see, oh look, a rad hose, cold. It gets warmer when you get close to the block, but not like not like hot like the car was. So on this note, guys, I'm just gonna end the video right here. If you know your Mini Coopers, please throw me some advice. Let me know what you think that could be. Until then, we'll talk to you guys later. Wish me luck.